I will give you an example. I have a business idea. Right? Uh, I, I read the newspapers and a, a lot of people are divorcing. Yeah, a lot of married couples choose to separate. They are divorcing. And this is a, a not so nice situation. You can imagine. A divorce is painful. It's painful for the family, for the kids, if they have kids, whatever. It's like an accident, I could say. No? Can you agree with me? It's like having a car accident. You, you, you get a divorce. It's a bad thing that happens to you. But for car accidents, you can buy what? Insurance. Why? I should not make a product called divorce insurance. The problem is like this. So he, here I am. This is the, the seller of the insurance. This is my company. Here is the buyer. Okay. And my business proposal will be like this. If you get divorced, I will pay you 100 units. Could be thousands, whatever. 100. Okay. Now I, I have a problem. How much should I ask? from the buyers, because this is the buyer. This is what I pay if the risk will happen, they divorce. How, how do I calculate the price? Because you know, when you buy insurance, you pay something right now, and you get more in the case of the risk. How do I calculate this? What should I look at? The percentage of people getting divorced. Very good, I look at the statistics, and I have numbers for a long time in Romania, how many people on average get divorced every year? And let's suppose I don't have the exact numbers, but I think I'm not far away with this uh, number. It would be like 20% of the couples will, will divorce. It would be like one in five. This is not so far away, which means that if I sell, let's say, 1,000 insurance policies, I expect that from 1,000 clients, how many will divorce? 200, very good, 200 will divorce, which will make me pay for each case 100, let's say, dollars. 100 dollars. So my total expense will be like 20,000 for one year. I will pay 20,000 dollars as the result of the divorce. How much do I want to get from the clients? Let's say if I get 25,000, I'm okay. So if my revenues are 25,000 and my cost is 20,000, then I can make a nice profit of 5,000. How much should I charge for one insurance then? $25. Yeah? So my product is like this. You pay me right now $25, and if you get divorced, I will pay you 100. You see, it's a good business proposition. Um, I had this 20% probability, which should be okay, should be pretty stable, and I make $5,000 at the end of the year. Is this okay? Do you believe in my business idea? No. No. You, you, you think that I should have some secrets here? Or what? No. What, what will change? What will happen? Everybody gets married, they come to you, they pay $25, they divorce the next day, they get back one. Okay, so very good. I have a problem now of asymmetric information. This is called asymmetric information. I, I think I, I discussed a little bit uh, about it uh, last uh, <clears throat> lecture. You see, there are two worlds here. It's my world, my life, where, where I am the seller, right? When I, where I think people are honest, people will uh, take care of their families, they will love each other, they will spend time with each other, whatever. And now I have the world of the buyers, the couples, that is separated. I, I cannot really read the minds. I cannot go and spend time with each family to ask them, uh, do you have dinners together? Do you talk to each other? I don't know, are you really close or you are separating? And with the time, so this is the time, yeah, there is a strong incentive for my buyers to change their behavior. They could either be less careful with their relationship, so they could be like, uh, uh, I don't care so much about this marriage because I'm insured. Or they could even be like criminals and they would say, let's pretend we divorce and then we happily live together. We take the money, we take the insurance. Who, who's going to 
chica, so what's the problem? And a lot of people will divorce, which will change this number. This will go like, I don't know, 50% at least, and my business will go bankrupt. This is called moral hazard. You see, moral hazard is a risk. A hazard is a risk from the moral perspective because the people will not behave morally. They will change their behavior. Where else do we see this thing? Drivers that have full insurance for the car. If I have full insurance, then I can drive faster, right? I can make the music louder. Do, 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 do. And, and I really enjoy life because guess what? I, I have insurance. And when I'm parking my car, I'm just, oh, come on, <laughs> I'm, I'm parking. Huh? Just a second. Why? Because I have insurance. If there is a scratch or something, it's no problem. But this is very bad for the insurance companies. What do you want to say? Uh, what about the bank that are bailed out by the government? Very good. This was the next e example that I wanted to touch. Big banks are called, or it's, it's a big statement, it says, too big to fail. It's another concept for you to uh, search for. It's called systemic risk. Systemic risk. Because you, you see, we live in an economy where some institutions play a huge role. And they are like domino pieces. You know, domino, it's a game. Uh, there are some shows where domino pieces are falling. Pa, 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 pa. And the banks are in the middle of the economy. Look, this is a, a company here, a big company, which is I don't know, holding all the cash reserves with this bank, right? This bank is lending a lot of money to this bank, which is lending a lot of money to this huge bank. Now, let's suppose this huge bank here is taking some disastrous decisions. They are really bad, really bad, really bad. And this one should fail. If this one will fail, the result would be that this bank will fail because they have money with bank one. Yeah, the bank two will fail too. Bank three will fail, and this will kill my big company. And this will kill another company here, another company here, which means they will not have money to pay for suppliers. The suppliers now will also have difficulties. So not only this company that has accounts with bank three will, be, will suffer. Also, the supplier of this company will suffer, which means now, now this is the supplier, and the supplier was supposed to pay back a credit, a loan, to bank four. And guess what? Now the supplier cannot get the money from this company, and he cannot pay the credit to bank four, and now bank four will fail too, which will hurt company. This company here and so on. This is called systemic risk because the whole system is in danger to collapse which means a lot of people will lose, will lose jobs, uh, unemployment, crime rate, uh, civil wars, whatever you can imagine, drugs, uh, alcohol problems, divorces, well, tragedy. It's a tragedy for the whole uh, economy. And therefore the government, which is here, is usually taking the approach of saving banks in trouble. So when this huge bank is in danger, the manager of the bank will go to the central bank, okay, will go to talk to the government and will say, uh, we have a problem, you know, but we are huge, so guess what, maybe we can find solutions. And, and the government is very likely to say, okay, I will help you. With money from the taxpayers, we will help this bank survive. But this is kind of insurance for the big banks. Isn't it? I mean, you, you can do whatever you want. You can make a lot of mistakes and you get bailed out. You, you get an insurance. It's no problem. How will this change your behavior? Will it be more risky or less risky, your behavior? More risky, for sure. Because now a second thing is coming. If I take a risk, I could win or I could lose. If I win, I get a big bonus because it was my good decision. Let's suppose I'm the manager of the bank and I take a huge risk and it's working. I'm successful. Then everybody will say, wow, amazing, very good. Get a big bonus. If I fail, it happens. Then what? I'll say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
you know, we, we are too big to fail, you should help us. And the government will help us, which makes the banks really aggressive. And this was a problem in the financial crisis. Again, for you to watch the, the big short uh, movie, and um, you, you will understand that if you, you save banks in troubles, you'll make them take more risk which is not good, which is not. Now, let's get to the second point here, adverse selection. And I will get back to my uh, divorce insurance uh, problem. Example, sorry. Let's suppose that I, I really love my business idea, and even if I make this 50%, if I make a loss in the first year, so I, I launch the business, and in the first year, I will uh, see that the probability was not 20%, was 50%, and, uh, which means I, I had to pay like 50,000, and I made minus 25,000. Um, yeah, because I collected 25,000, but I paid 50, which makes a loss of 25,000. The next year, I will be much smarter, and I will say, sorry, the price is not 25, the price is 70. So if you want to buy insurance from me, please pay 70 and I will pay you 100 when uh, you divorce. Which now makes me on the safe side. Makes it or not? Because look, I had a 50% and I made the insurance really expensive, which means that couples should pay more for this insurance. What can go wrong now? Very good, very good. I have a problem in selecting my customers because this product is open for all. It's quite expensive. And couples that are really in love and don't think about divorce, they will say, why should I pay 70? This is a huge price for a, such a low probability because I know my uh, family. I know there is a lot of uh, love and romance. So it really makes no sense to do this. But the couples that are really fighting already, or the couples that have this criminal view, uh, they would like to get the money and then live happily together, they will be attractive. So they will come to me and say, wow, sure, no problem. I'm a very safe, uh, happy, married person. I, I just want to have this insurance. And if, I, if my customers will be this with high risk, at the end of the year, it might turn out that I had a 99% divorce rate in my customer's base, and this will really ruin my business. And this is relevant, for example, when the interest rate is very high. Let's suppose in an economy, interest rate is getting high. Maybe because of crowding out, or maybe because of other uh, causes. The interest rate will be high. Now, what investment projects do you think that will be in the market? Those with very high risk or those with not so big risk? Low risk. Low risk or high risk? What do you think? Who will ask for money? Who will be on the demand side? Because the interest rate is very, very high. It's like what I did here. I increased the price. High risk. High risk customers. Very good. High risk investor will be those that uh, have a very, very big bet. Yeah, the, the business idea is a big bet. And they will say, okay, if, I, if the bet is going to be all right, I'm paying back this huge interest rate. But if the bet is going wrong, that's it. I'm not paying back. The customers that have criminal intention, they will also be happy to get a loan because I don't want to pay back anyway. So I will go to the bank and I will say, come on, give me a loan. Yeah, I have a big idea. Interest rate is high, doesn't matter. My investment is amazing. Look, I have everything here. Well, I have no problem that the interest rate is very high because I don't want to pay anyway back. <clears throat> what if I, <clears throat> for example, <clears throat> make loans more easily available? It, what happened in the United States with this mortgage? Yes. They made the mortgages very easy without big documentation. You don't have to bring any proof that you have a big salary or something like that. You can get a mortgage. What kind of customers I, I'm attracting? 
high risk customers very very good I, i'm attracting the customers that really don't care about if they pay back or not and this is what actually happened there they had a lot of bad toxic they called toxic mortgages which triggered the huge financial crisis 